Hurricane Harvey will go down in history as one of the most devastating storms to hit the Gulf Coast. If water levels rise, officials say, do not go into your attic. You need to be in a place where you can get to your roof. If you get up on the roof, wave a towel. We have something that emergency choppers can see you, that they can come to your rescue and help you. As the National Weather Service warns of rain well into the middle or even late next week, uh, we've thrown a lot of numbers around in terms of what was anticipated, what has arrived. We're certainly seeing the waters rise on the ground. How much rain's actually falling from the sky? Some areas have seen up to 20 inches of rain in the last 24 hours, and this is all going up. As I speak, let me give you an idea of exactly what I'm talking about. We have a photo, a before and after photo as well to show you, of a main highway in Houston. So it's a bit blurry, but it's from a traffic cam, but you can barely see that highway on the right-hand side, completely overtaken by water. So officials saying, you know, you need to stay indoors, wait for us, wait for us there. The mayor of Houston, you know, he was asked about why didn't, why didn't people evacuate? Why didn't you tell people to evacuate? He said 2.3 million people on the road, that's dangerous, this is unprecedented, and so stay in your homes, wait for help to come to you. Guys, we are hanging out at a raceway in Alabama, uh, heading to Texas. You guys can see what's going on in the back. We're loading that boat down full of gas cans. So uh, we're stoked, man. We're, uh, we're cruising. We should land boots on the ground somewhere around 5 or 6 this evening. So uh, we're looking forward to getting there, getting set up, and uh, we'll update you guys further. We'll see you all there. Priceless unity as Americans from all walks of life band together to help their neighbors and strangers. Miles of boats lined up to ferry residents trapped in floodwaters, while others risk life and limb to pull grateful families from murky trenches. Like, right. 
like people came up here and they're like we were past the people screaming stuff was going on. Right. But I don't know how long ago that was. Right. He, he found us. Okay. You know, I don't know. Off the trip. So uh, everybody's been finding us. So yeah. Uh, this, all this stuff came from the guys in Hattiesburg. Uh, we just got through telling people we didn't have food, and 30 minutes later, this place is full. Right. So, My stuff's coming. Cool. 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 These, guys, these guys have been on the road for like yeah, man. 50 Ooh. hours. You just arrived. Share with us how you were rescued. Some guys had uh, called our phone and asked us where we were because we was waiting for the police for like 36 hours and they never came. And we was waiting at the home. We did the white flags and everything and nobody came. But then somebody had called the phone after we decided to leave the house and we had walked to the gas station with the kids. And then they had called and came and picked us up. But we had been there like five days with, with no food and no lights and nobody came. Like nobody came. Crisis brings out both the best and the worst in people. There are reports of people impersonating Homeland Security, ordering people to evacuate their homes only so they could then rob them. As emergency crews work to save those still trapped, they must also deal with looters who dare mess with Texas at their own peril.
Families have given food and shelter to those in need. Houses of worship have organized efforts to clean up communities and repair damaged homes. People have never seen anything quite like this. Individuals of every background are striving for the same goal, to aid and comfort people facing devastating losses. As Americans, we know that no challenge is too great for us to overcome. No challenge.